Hi, I'm Madeline Gleemore and I was on the development team. I was a script writer and I was a script editor for Away From It All. I'm Anna Vince. I'm a developer, writer, director, set designer, script editor and the head of social media and transmedia. I also played Robin Troy. Hi, I'm Lindsay Mendes and I was one of the writers on Away From It All. Hi, I'm Desmond. I was on the writing um, story development and transmedia teams for Away From It All. Hi, my name's Catherine Raw, and I was one of the directors as well as the designer on Away From It All. Hi, I'm Hazel. I'm the creator, producer, head writer, gen of all trades and doer of things in Away From It All. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ashlyn and I'm one of the writers for Away From It All. Um, I'm from Toronto, Canada. You can probably see the tower in my background the crossover with Nothing Like the Sun happened because Discordia Productions contacted us in November 2016. We spent a few weeks figuring out which characters would meet each other, how they would meet, and it went from there. And for everything else, just I think it's kind of been a thing for a while that when people make a web series account, they like follow other um, web series character accounts that aren't like in their own series and that just kept happening to us so I thought I'd try and chat to people so I think I think the first time I did that was making Liddy talk to um, Rose and Better Strange a little bit I can't remember if that was on Twitter or YouTube and then um, Emma from the Emma Agenda was following a few of them and like started talking to Liddy so we talked back to them and then um, yeah when Middlemarch started up again just Liddy like automatically went for Fred because they're kindred spirits in many ways so yeah, it was pretty much all spontaneous, um, I didn't really ask, just thought I'd see what happened because everyone in the web series world is pretty lovely and I know some of them anyway, so I thought it'd be fun. I guess it's important to me, partly because there's just such, such few ace representation in anything. Um, so yeah, I wanted to see that and then also just because I'm ace I respect and that kind of that was kind of something I felt qualified writing about more than a lot of other identities. So, yeah, I thought I'd put that in, and it just yeah, as I said before, that was just how I thought of Bath since I started reading the book. Really, I guess in the show and transmedia, it was just trying to keep a balance between um, like Bath being really confused by um, her sexuality and like thinking of it as a bad thing, like something to hide and something to try and fix for a long time, but not actually portraying it as that. Like it's not a bad thing, but she thinks it's a bad thing. And we see a lot of things from her perspective, so it's just trying to definitely not frame it as a bad thing, if that makes any sense. I guess like through the series, Gabe is quite judgmental and like trying to fix a lot of things about a lot of people. And just I think it was really important that Bath being asexual was something that he would never try and fix. That was just something he'd be like, oh, okay, cool, awesome. But like I'm gonna think about that and how it like might affect my relationship with you. But but yeah, that's not gonna be something I'm gonna go all previous game about. I'm really glad someone thought we represented sexuality so well. Um, I go back and forth a bit. I wish we'd talked about it a bit more really, but yeah. Maybe we've had more episodes at the end. Um, the thing I remember us working on for a long time in development meetings was definitely um, what became the babysitting scene. It was like the sheep bloating scene in the book and we talked about a lot of different ways to take that one. Sheepgate comes to mind. It turns out it's pretty challenging trying to update someone losing everything because their entire flock of sheep run off a cliff. So we spent quite a lot of time in development meetings trying to come up with something sheep related that Gabe could have done to be kicked out of university that was bad enough to warrant that but not so bad that it made his character look awful. Um, there were suggestions like um, in one of the labs at university he let loose a load of like gerbils or something. Um, there were loads of different ideas. That's the main one I can remember. So in the end we decided to make it a running joke. In between meetings um, I was watching some Gavin and Stacey and if anyone's seen that then there's a the whole thing in it about that camping trip. Yeah, just, you, you get hints of what it is but you never find out what it is. And I've always thought that was really funny so I was like, ha! Idea. The most difficult character to translate, I think, was probably Bathsheba. For somebody like Liddy, uh, a lot of that was pretty much just invented. And then for characters like like Boldwood or Frank Troy, um, they had to be modernized, but kind of the, the interesting and depressing thing about that 
was that they were really easy to modernize. When you kind of read him on the page of, of Far From the Madding Crowd, you like know exactly who that guy is. For Bathsheba, since her arc in the book is about vanity, and we really wanted to make sure that that was not her mark in the modern day, um, there was a big question of, well, what's her arc? And how do we make an arc that is, that is an actual adaptation of Far From the Madding Crowd without like being really regressive? Liddy was kind of hard to translate from the book. She wasn't, she's not in it very much, so it's kind of hard to translate a character who isn't in it very much to like one of the most, one of the central voices. Yeah, she was, she was a little tricky, but I kind of had a, I had a clear image from the stuff that had been discussed in like development meetings and stuff. So I had a pretty clear idea in my mind of Liddy's voice in my head, but it's still kind of difficult translating from like scene to scene. I think my favourite days were pretty much when we had like the entire like ensemble cast in, they were a lot of fun. My favourite episode to film was number 29, um, I think it's called Ambush, it, it was a very emotional episode to film. You know, once we set the camera rolling and uh, the actors started doing their thing, it, oh, it was just wonderful to watch and I remember shutting off the camera and immediately going and giving Dan a hug because, my lord, <laughs> um, no, he did so well. I don't think I can choose a favourite, but episode one really stands out because that sunset was incredible. I still can't quite believe it happened, it was beautiful. I think my absolute favourite thing was was up on Woodbury Common at shooting episodes one, three, and I can't remember the number of the one where um, Bathing Gay walking through the like foresty bit. Yeah, I remember we filmed episode three and I ran ahead to try and find a good place to film episode one. I like, got onto this little bit of a hill and there was like the road on the other side and there was another bit of hill like beyond. I like ran across the road and ran up that little bit of hill and then there was just the whole sky stretched out and I just went a bit mad. I like I ran back to everyone else and we all just like ran across the road. Deb's just like fell on her face um, across a completely flat bit of tarmac because it's Deb's. Um, but she was fine, she was fine. We'll just run up there and we'll take photos of each other and just like, oh my gosh, can you believe this? And it was just so, oh, I love that day. And also because an entire photography club decided to just set up right in front of us as we were about to start filming, which was really funny. My favorite episode that I worked on was uh, probably the episode where Sherry and Liddy have their first kiss. Uh, it was a really special that he's looking at the responsibility to write that episode. Also, we only had Mirren with us for a short amount of time, which meant that we filmed almost the entirety of the Liddy and Sherry storyline over about one or two days, and it was just so much fun. The majority of those episodes are a lot more light-hearted, which was a welcome breather from all of the angst we'd been filming. I don't know if this counts as a thing, but <laughs> um, in terms of designing, I, I did all the thumbnails for all of the individual episodes. My favourite one to do with that was actually, uh, I'm just looking at it now, I think it was Moss and Memories, which is episode 45, because I remember looking at it afterwards and just going, that's just a really pretty thumbnail. But my favourite line of Elm that I wrote was, you gotta be uh, wax on, wax off, motherfucker. It's a very jump line and I love it. <sighs> Where do I start? If you're like us, you'll be working under pretty strict time constraints, so plan, 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 plan. Take your time with pre-production, or like, it doesn't necessarily have to take tons and tons of time, but like, think out all the character arcs. I think it's it's so valuable to know, know your source material and to know it well. Just, I think anything you can do to build your skills as a storyteller in general um, will really help you with a web series. As much as possible, write to what you have. Um, if you have a location that you know is really interesting to look at, if you have music that you know you can get rights to, if you have props that you know would be interesting, write to what you have. Um, it makes everything a whole lot easier. If you've never written a screenplay type thing before, then definitely talk to people whose like, main job is visuals because yeah, that's just really important. Um, like stuff about sorting out props and costumes, like I had no idea about before I talked about it to Anushka. Then a whole lot of general like technical filming stuff about light and space and all that lot I hadn't even thought about before we started talking to Ellie. So yeah, like definitely 
if you're not hiring someone specifically for that, just make sure you talk to people who know about that before. Also, just don't be afraid to ask people for help. If you're not like the main showrunner, don't be afraid to ask questions. I think on my first script, I asked about 5,000 questions because I was still like getting into the rhythm of it and I had never written a script before. It wasn't tricky for me, but it was just new. Whatever you do, do not try to do pre-production, production, and post-production at, at the same time because you will go crazy. If possible, get all your script writing done and then cast and then film and then edit. Maybe overlap them a little bit, but don't do all three of them at once. Keep different aspects of your web series in mind. You may have the most amazing script in the world, but the reality is that if your audio and lighting are terrible, people might not watch it. If you can, go and help on the set, because I regret that. I would love to have gone and helped. Think about like some practical things like, oh, maybe if you're shooting in the middle of summer, don't like film inside camper vans, which are like actual ovens, and then because it's meant to be a camper van in the autumn, all your cast have to wear like big fluffy coats. And there's like five of you in this little camper van oven in the boiling sun and everyone's dying. D maybe don't do that. Um, likewise with like people sitting in an attic in the middle of summer, it gets, it gets pretty hot. Oh, one last tip is find really great people to work with you. I think the best thing for me on all the web series I've worked on is just like the amazing people. And it really helps to have people to bounce ideas off of. And like, if you get stuck on something, then someone else will come back and figure it out. Reach out to people on the internet. This community has so many people who are willing to help and create. They may not live anywhere near you, but it's so valuable having a big team of people with different talents and strengths and ideas that you can collaborate with and delegate things to. Asking people to do things for you can be so outside of somebody's comfort zone, I think especially for young women, um, but you just have to like work against that as much as you can. You, you can't make it alone. And it just made you want to think. Uh, just, I don't know, just do it. Just do it. Tell yourself you can do it, because you can, and there are likely other people out there that want to help you make it. Um, I said it's like, there's privilege that isn't to be able to make a thing. I just, yeah, having time and money to do it. But you can make something, you know, once you've made a thing, then no one can take that away from you. Even if, like, the internet dies, it won't stop the fact that you made it. And yeah, it's, it's a cool learning experience, and you should do it. I, I dare you. <laughs> make a series, do it. With like the whole series, I start off like going through the book and like adapting plot point to plot point, but then after a while I found that wasn't really working, so I did like a big story arc thing basically. I did character arcs for each individual character and marked down where their different climaxes and stuff were. And then um, through development meetings, we like changed that again and got rid of a couple of characters and yeah, just reworked various points. And then I turned that after a few meetings into a big episode guide. After development, I had the advantage of being on development team before writing team, so I was really familiar with all the stuff um, that we were doing and the characters beforehand, which helped a lot. Um, and then Hazel kind of divided up who was going to write what. And we did like a, um, a Google Forms thing, people to select the episodes they were interested in, and then from that, I like, share them out between everyone, trying to keep as many people happy as I could. So what I did was I started with I read the whole book just to get an idea of the story and then what I did was focus on the chapters that um, corresponded to the scripts I was writing and also the chapters before and after just to get a sense of like scenario and scene and stuff. Just so things like had like a good flow and stayed, stayed relevant. And then the process was like sitting on my laptop at 11 p.m. being like, I can't write words. Um, as I think is any writer's process, right? My process just isn't that complicated. I just kind of sit down and write. I did, because it was an adaptation, do the sacrilegious thing, and I underlined my copy of Fire from the Madding Crowd a lot. For me, the most important thing with writing is to really understand the characters that you're writing, because everything else sort of falls out from there. And so to get a sense of the characters, I found it really helpful to go through the book and just look for the details that showed you who they were. The actual writing process was really fun and challenging, but also kind of surreal. We only had a few weeks to write the 50 episodes, and I was in Berlin for part of that, so I was just squeezing in writing any spare moment I had. Everyone wrote first drafts, um, pretty much in chronological order, and then as many of us as possible um, just like wrote notes on those drafts, and then the next week 
they would redraft that. And then um, those redrafts go into a big editing dock where me and Steph, Madeline, and then a little bit later, Anna, to an extent, um, like went through and edited the series as a whole to make sure it like worked coherently. Resource-wise, we used Writer Duet to write our scripts on, which I would recommend, and we organised everything on Trello. You can set deadlines and upload scripts and share resources, which was really useful. I'm trying to think. The writing process for me... Anytime Frank Troy was in it was really easy because I just knew that character. And for Bathsheba, I found her not not hard to write, but there's just more going on with Bathsheba. There's, there's you know, layers. One of the things I like about her in both the book and in what we ended up doing with the web series is that she's she gets to be unlikable sometimes, um, and that's okay. She can be abrasive and she can be kind of domineering, but like that's it's great because it's what lets her do things. Um, so anyway, I got off the topic, which is just that Bathsheba was, I think, more challenging, but more ultimately rewarding to write. You know, there's definitely writer's block moments. Some scenes came really easily and I just like sat down and I was like, boom, 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 this is what's gonna happen. Like, um, Joe's birthday, I feel like came together quite easily. More serious ones were a lot more of a struggle. I kind of don't believe in writer's block. I feel like most of the time you can work through it somehow or other, but sometimes you end up with a lot of terrible stuff on the page that you have to scrap. Sometimes you have to like go write something else and come back to it. Apparently one of my techniques is to like write a really snarky, terrible version of the scene and then go back and fix it. Cause sometimes that helps me get like, like the outline and the structure of what should happen. So I don't know, I have like really dumb draft of the when Boldwood and Bathsheba are at Marianne's wedding. So I have a draft somewhere where it's like all lines from like Anakin and Padme in Star Wars episode two. And also I listened to the um, soundtrack as I was writing these scripts and that really helped as well because that kind of got me into like the tone and the mood because music's so helpful. Good writing soundtracks help. I listen to a lot of Lord while I'm writing. I guess my tip and tricks for writing is just really making sure that you, you know your characters and you know who you're writing. Like our set of um, on-set crew changed a few times, so it kind of depended on who we had. So for the first few days, um, Anna directed, Ellie was our DOP on the camera, and I was just doing producing. First I generally rehearsed with the actors, that was a time for me to give Ellie direction and for them to ask questions about positioning, character motivation, where in the plot this came, because we filmed most of the episodes out of order. Then we would set dress and the actors would get their costumes on. Like some costume stuff was fought through, but quite a lot of it was very last minute. Like some costume stuff I did think about a bit more. Like like the main people I was designing costumes for was Liddy, Sherry and Bath. And like Liddy does definitely get like less colourful when her mood's down and Bath has like um, <laughs> this jumper which indicates she's about to like, make a bad decision. And she has like the grey cardigan which is when she's really sad and like she goes really monochrome and like a little bit punk and starts wearing necklaces when Frank's around. I would discuss lighting and camera positioning with Ellie, our cinematographer, and Hazel would get the audio ready. And then the actors would come in, and we always shot more than one take. It wasn't so straightforward when we were filming in the pub or outside. There was a lot more time spent on pacing and blocking and movement. Later on we had Kate as our director, Michaela was production assistant, I was still producer, and we had Lee on the camera. I think the actors generally got the script all the way up to the night before sometimes. You know, when I got the scripts, I then read through, made any last minute changes that I wanted to make that I sort of felt would work in that situation. Obviously talking it over with Hazel, I didn't just make the changes, but we'd get on to set, we'd run through um, the blocking a few times, so you know, how you, uh, how you set people on the set. Then we'd film at least a few times until, you know, we got a shot that we were happy with. Yeah, that's it really. <laughs> One of the hardest things for me in coming to set was actually having to make the jump um, between what I'd been filming the previous week, which was, the, you know, a different company, very different text. I was directing uh, As You Like It for Foot in the Door Theatre. Um, we were doing scenes out in a wood in the middle of Hampshire and then went straight on down to Devon uh, to shoot on away from it all. It was just so interesting working with the two groups of people and you know what similarities there were and what differences. Frank's magic trick, I wrote that. <laughs> I wrote that, I don't know magic at all. And also, just that entire episode, I'm so proud of it. It's my favourite episode with the Lady TV. 
I just feel proud that it exists, really. I'm really proud of Gabe and Bath's uh, fight scene in Bathsheba's apartment. Um, it was incredibly difficult to write. I'm not necessarily always comfortable having characters who I like being upset and angry with each other, but it was an incredibly important scene. And I remember when I was writing it and I'd put up the first draft and I was talking to the other writers and I was like, I'm so self-conscious about this episode because I just feel like they're being terrible. Every single person who, who looked at it and gave me feedback on it said, no, this is good, they need to be terrible, you can even push it further. And I'm so proud of how real um, Hazel and the actors, good lord, um, allowed that scene to get. I really enjoyed and liked how the one, the, it was like Frank and Bathsheba went on Lily's blog, I don't remember the episode title. That was probably the one I had the most fun writing of the ones I wrote and it came out really cute and funny. One of the things I'm really nerdily proud of is um, in uh, a sunny Liddy says goodbye or something like that. I got my bunting in the episode. That bunting I have used in every one of my productions since um, 2011. Yeah, but if you if you want to go and watch As You Like It, which is also on YouTube on the Foot in the Door Theatre channel, um, you'll see that the same bunting makes an appearance in that a few times. Oh, and everyone loved and I was really proud of Boldwood's um, birthday message for Joe where he was like, you seem a good man, Joseph. The various ways the story is told and all the different groups of people that work to make that happen, from the vlogs and the private videos to the phones and social media. The other thing I'm really soppily proud of is Hazel. No, she, she did so well to, uh, you know, bring together so many different people, like, across the world. Like, that's a big project. Even when we were on set, you know, she was staying up till goodness knows when in the morning, working on these scripts, working on, you know, everything we needed for the next day. But, you know, she, she just managed to pull together a fantastic cast, um, majority of whom I don't think she even knew. And it was such a different experience from, um, you know, working on From Mansfield With Love, where, like, we pretty much knew everybody. Uh, something I'm really proud of the show is just the team that we created and the friendships that we made out of that team, but also just the amount of effort and work we did in such a short amount of period of time is a true testament of the LAW community and uh, how much I appreciate that community. And I'm proud of... Or just that everyone's work actually went into producing a thing, really. And, yeah, just watching the actors go, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're all so good. And then watching how beautiful cinematography is, I'm like, oh, Leo and Ellie are so good. And then just seeing how everything's come together, I'm like, oh my gosh, Anna and the team are so, so good. And, oh, I love how... I don't know everything about it because I'm a critical person in general. But I love the people in it. And I love how I can see them through it and yeah, just how hard they worked. It makes you feel all the feelings. I'm so freaking proud of everybody who worked on this. I, there are a lot of them who I've never talked to in my life because they live in England, um, but they all just did a phenomenal job and poured so much time and effort into it. And I am so incredibly proud to have been part of it. I just loved getting to see. It was the very first thing I've ever written that was like on a screen for people to see. and. I'm so proud to have been a part of it. I'm so glad that that was the first one, because it was great. I don't really think I have anything to plug. Um, oh, Maggie Hale's Corner coming at some point. Me, Jessamine, um, the showrunner of that, Lacey, and lovely Nalima um, all helped write that, and it's filming at the moment, and that's coming at some point. Um, and Jessamine's probably going to talk about Winston's, but it's a lot of the theatre crew trying to do like a screwball comedy thing set in America. Um, I guess I'll just quickly plug my upcoming web series, um, which we're hopefully by the time this video is out, the crowdfunding campaign will be up. It's a uh, modern gender bent adaptation of Shakespeare's A Comedy of Errors. An adopted girl looking for her birth family, and then um, it turns out she has an identical twin unbeknownst to her so they end up in the same town and there's mix-ups and mayhem there's comedy there's drama there's everything in between um and a lot of the team from away from it all um is on my story team 
So it's been really great working with them again, and I'm really excited. We're about to start production here uh, within, the next, within the next few weeks, and I'm really excited to see it come together. Um, I just wanted to say um, thank you, all you lovely people, for watching. You, uh, Thank you so much <laughs> for watching this thing that we made. And thank you for liking episodes and liking us. Just being so lovely and wonderful. We've had such a lovely response. And we c I couldn't have asked for a better experience for writing on my first series and writing like my first ever script. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. Uh, you guys are amazing. And thank you, Hazel, for letting me be part of it. Just thank you for caring, really. I keep saying thanks, but really, really thank you. This has been a strange old, hard old two years. I'm really glad it happened. And I'm glad all these people are in my life. <laughs> Bye lovelies. We just had the most incredible team around us. Cast, I don't know you, but you're also fantastic. And all of you, you're all incredible. You've all been such fun to work with and get to know and it's just been the best experience. I can't say anything else. It's just been incredible. Thank you. Thank you.